I, I remember, a, and this isn't an invented story, this really is a real story that I remember when I was babysitting when I was 14 and I was watching television and this film came on that um, just completely kind of um, blew me away because it was outside of the norms of television. It was like something that came from another universe and it was so exciting to me that I remember leaving the babysitting and thinking I want to do, I want to be that, I want to be a filmmaker, but I, I can imagine if I'm a girl that could be tricky, I'm sure this is what men do. I think that, that, that it's an incredibly powerful position to be a woman. Um, you have the fool's mandate for a start, which gives you the ability to be outspoken. You know, it, it, the thing is, is that when you when you do become a mother, you realise how many fields you've had to ask to be be part of. But that's the one that is really your domain. I took great delight in telling Anselm Kiefer when he said, "Oh, I'm a mother. I've been a mother five times because he's had five children." And I said, "No, there are many things you can claim for yourself, Anselm, but being a mother is not one of them, and it never will be." I don't look at much mainstream cinema myself because uh, I find it boring. I think that actually everybody wants to engage in, in big ideas, in, in interesting ideas, forget big. I mean, people are, we're all here, we don't know really how we're here, why we're here, and every person is interested in that question. What for me is great about Slavoj, he makes it accessible. Because he's, his English isn't his first language, he uses it in a kind of, it's almost like he's like um, like wrestling with it. He uses it like, you know, he kind of slams and throws it against the wall and sees how it lands as language to communicate thinking. Let me take a drink. Still, some of it, Starbucks coffee. I'm regularly drinking it, I must admit it. But are we aware that when we buy a cappuccino from Starbucks, we also buy quite a lot of ideology? What for me is exciting is the process of creating it. And once that's done, I kind of almost, you know, sort of, yeah, I don't even care. But the process of it is just so delicious, you know, the exploring of the material and allowing Slavoj to sort of go off on tangent, see what he came up with. A Slavo was sitting talking to me, and I suddenly had this thought, I wonder what would happen if he met that guy from The Matrix. But the choice between the blue and the red pill is not really a choice between illusion and reality. And then all kinds of interesting things happened to do with you know, the idea that a film's world isn't a geographical place, but kind of subverting that and saying, well, maybe it is. Kind of playing with our, with these interior places that we all coexist in that aren't even real. You know, I certainly feel when I'm shaping things, you know, you want to create something that's going to unsettle the viewer or push them into a place that's unexpected. And so working through the, that in the process is, is always really fascinating for me. It's a wonderful experience to film Grace because she's a performer, so she's always kind of in the moment, which is great for observational filmmaking. I made a film about her brother, who's a Pentecostal bishop, and um, she um, saw the film, and this is a real credit to Grace, you know, because that was a film that hadn't, didn't have any cinematic release. I'd only made, like, one thing for TV. I mean, she just stood up at the end, and she... I remember because she was there, she stood up, she clashed. <laughs> Honey, I love the smell of your film. <laughs> so then she's like, you know, let's do something. I think that, you know, the limitations are always internal. They're not external. They're internal and you've got to take responsibility for them. Be brave. And, you know, always remember you've got nothing to lose.